I like about my show is is that it's a low budget show with high caliber guests. And uh, it's time for us to do this again. Leon is now back with us. Let's go ahead and open up our conversation. All right. I am back, my friend. I know it looked like I was never coming back, but I had so many people that responded, and some of them were reaching out to me in between. Uh, Can you hear me comfortably? Can you hear me? Uh, I hear you just great. That actually sounds really good. This is going to be the first time I ever um, held my microphone and did a show. So we're going to have some fun here because I am improvising (laughs) as we speak. Um, So uh, everybody, I need everybody to do me a favor this time. I was looking back at everyone's thoughts throughout the show. Uh, (laughs) Master Chef, that must be you, my man. Somebody just put it. That's one of my. And Master Chief, that was my rank in the Navy. I think this oh, okay, Master, Master yeah. Chief, I'm sorry. Okay. No, you, <clears throat> hey. <laughs> so can you see some of them on the screen? This time, um, we're going to work off the screen and a few other things. Um, I'm going to move some things around here. Hold on one second. I'm going to do I that. The screen thing, I don't even look at it. I see them rolling up, but I don't I don't want to get distracted. So I don't. They, really- they go so fast. I'm just letting you know that. Um, just so you know, that did say, that said, hi, Master Chief. Um, by far low budget, Paxton. Thank you very much. Uh, I take that as a compliment. Um, right. a lot of people, dude. I can't even keep track. Of everybody here, Jasmine, uh, others that are here. I want to start this off. Uh, this time we're together here. Hello, t- uh, teacher uh, for hope. By the way, everybody, if you want to say where you're com- where you're coming in from, go ahead and do that as well. If uh, what part of the world you're coming in from? Uh, somebody did say Leon in the first segment. Mm-hmm. that they went to school with you. Hold on one second. And they wanted to to say that they were encouraged by you. So I just wanted to tell you that that was Crystal Sky 22. Thank you. Crystal Sky 22. So I'm just throwing that out to you. Um, Thank you. Do, Leon, there was so much in there. I could have probably gone another two more hours. But before I re, when I go to reload again, I will lose all of those conversations. I just wanted to try to pull out as much as I could and pass it on to you. Uh, you're getting a bunch of hearts across the screen. You're getting a bunch of things happening. Everybody's coming in. Sally, Pauly, Hershey, of course, uh, Vanessa from the Life Path 22. Uh, uh, Camilla is here and others. I want to start off with this. All right, here we go. Let's do it. We're going to talk about relationships this segment. You're the relationship coach. I got you. You have, uh, you have a book coming out in December. You highlight it. Yeah. I'll throw this at you and then just have at it, okay? Just mm-hmm. just go. So here we go. First one, I'm going to throw some things at you. You go and then uh, I'll cut you off or we'll move to the next one. I okay. just want to do, um, do this. First one, describe the silent treatment Ooh. from the narcissistic standpoint, not Hi. from the, perpetra- and not from the, the, the uh, victim standpoint. Uh, but from your from from a, a narcissistic person standpoint, facts that was silent treatment. That that right there, I who and think about it now. I just I get chills, man, because it's it's very dangerous. So with me, the silent treatment was it happened for many reasons. If you, I knew that you were onto me, that you knew I mm-hmm. I wasn't who I was when we met. I started slacking off. <clears throat> I started. Um, not doing the things that I said I would do or stop doing what I used to do. And you pissed me off. I don't do this anymore. It's very, very evil. Um, especially if I know that you like to talk. Okay. If I know that you like to talk, you want to communicate, you want to know things and you hurt my feelings. Narcissistic people, they, people always say, uh, Oh, they don't, they don't, uh, they don't have any remorse, whatever. If you hurt my feelings or oh, they don't, you can't hurt their feelings. Yes, you can. I'm honest about it now, but years ago I would be like, "You ain't hurt my feelings. I don't give. I don't care about you. You know that don't mean nothing to me. You know, ain't nobody gonna treat you like I'm treating you. Yeah, keep tripping. Blah 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 blah. I was like that, bro. <clears throat> so anyway, silent treatment. If I knew that you like to talk, and I knew that you want to know something about me or what's going on with us, where we going, Leon? What we doing? I get attitude quick, get mad, shut down, nothing. And if you keep asking me, the long if you ask me again, that's another hour. I'm gonna be quiet. And then woman would be like, oh, God. What? what? Oh, God, what? Are you mad because I don't want to talk? I don't have to talk. You can't make me talk. 
So I flip it on her. I reverse it, make it seem like it was her fault because I'm not talking. But anyway, I didn't want to talk anyway. Right? So hey. I, I wasn't a good Okay, that, that's what I had to ask. You didn't really want to talk anyhow, right? Right. But um, by virtue of being in the Navy and being a leader and being around people, I had to learn to talk, okay? Let me tell you something. I've slept with a lot of women, right? I'm not proud of that. I'm very embarrassed about that. But, and I didn't realize I had this problem until I was 50, okay? I'm not, I wasn't a verbal person in the bedroom, okay? Outside of the bedroom, when I got upset, I was verbal, loud, right? I wasn't verbal in the bedroom. And so women would say, Leon, did you enjoy yourself? Did you, you know, reach your level of, you know, satisfaction? I don't know, Leon, you don't talk in the bed. And I was like, Shh. I ain't saying nothing. She, right? And so I go through therapy in January 2015, mm -hmm. six months before I retire. I wasn't going to go talk to a psychiatrist. I, I, I got my separation physical and I went to turn my paperwork in. The young lady said, Master Chief, you didn't finish your physical. I'm like, yes, I did. I'm, I did. And she said, look, let me show you. She showed me a piece of paper. The bottom line, I skipped the psychiatrist. She's like, you got to get that done. I'm like, I'm not going to see no psychiatrist because I knew if wait, I- Wait, wait, you skipped on purpose? You skipped on purpose? Yeah. <laughs> well, I said, if I knew if I was going to see the psychiatrist, it was over. I was going to be in that. <laughs> anyway. She said, well, we, if you're not going to go, we can't start your retirement. I'm like, it's 32 years. I'm ready to go. She said, well, go back. Go. I was like, oh, no. I go. I sign up. I fill the paperwork out. This lady said, jeez, Mr. Walker, you have a lot of issues. Now I'm getting offended. I go back oh, to wow. ways. I had never. I knew about, about narcissism from 1987. I knew. I knew who okay. I was. Okay. So she offended me. I'm thinking like, who did, who are you talking to? But she didn't mean to. She's like, you have a lot of issues. Because when you go see a psychiatrist, you have to fill out the paperwork and they add your numbers up about how severe it is. Whether you got uh -huh. personality disorder, mood disorder, personality disorders, uh, <clears throat> PTSD, whatever, anxiety, I had it all. So I'm like, look, I'm out. I put the clipboard and walked out of the hospital. I went back to work and she said, where's the paperwork at, Mr. Walker? Did you sign, did you, you start your therapy? I'm like, she said, I said, no. She said, well, listen, Master Chief, you have to go. So I go back the next day and the lady's like, hey, I apologize because I know I probably triggered you. And in my mind, I'm like saying myself, you know, I want to get rah, rah, but I'm a senior leader in the league. I can't get rah, rah. I'm like, yeah, you, you triggered me. But anyway, I was like, yes, ma'am. Fill the paperwork out again. I go in there. <clears throat> And we going through all of this stuff. What was the question? Take me to the question again, Fax. When it when it comes to, I forgot. Just go. Just keep going. <laughs> I just went forgot. I had it for a second. All right, go ahead. So so so, so you're at the psychiatrist, right? And so I'm starting to answer these questions again, and I get frustrated because I got to relive the questions. It's like, you mm -hmm. know, do you want to commit suicide? Do you think you you know you ever think about hurting yourself? How are you with relationships? Anti-social, blah, 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 blah. And I'm filling stuff out, and then I'm like, you know what? Let's go, on, go through this. Go go through this. So she had me relive my whole childhood. She had me go over everything. She had me talk about my past. She had me talk about being molested. She had me talk about the point. Everything. Then she had me write down what happened on the USS Star. I had to be in there writing, 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 writing. So I saved the paperwork because I was writing, and I was like, I just started. My anger just blew up. Right there at the psychiatrist, the social worker. I'm sorry, the social worker. And I'm just scribbling. I'm like tearing paper up and I'm tripping. I'm like, so it started coming out. Mm -hmm. Started coming out. And I knew then that I said, I'm really bad off here. I was a senior leader. I had led thousands, hundreds of thousands of sailors, men and women. And I just suppressed it so far, deep, so deep, so long. I didn't, again, I didn't think that it was there because I was dealing with disassociation, right? Suppression, emotionally right. detached. Right. That my ability to separate myself from re reality. Okay. And so 
it started coming out and I knew that I had major, major issues. I knew that I had oral fixation problems. I always had to chew on something. Mm. I get what I was saying. Now, <clears throat> when I was molested, my cousins used to tell me to be quiet. When my babysitter molested me, she used to tell me to be quiet. Mm -hmm. My uncle started touching me. He used to tell me to be quiet. Sexually, I wasn't verbal in the bed because of that. And I didn't find it out until I went through therapy. I didn't find it out until I talked to my social worker. Mm -hmm. I had intense in-care patient. The psychiatrist brought it out. And so I knew then that the reason why I wasn't a good communicator is because I was told to be quiet when right. I was, when they were touching me and when they were molesting me. My cousins taught me how to kiss. I talk about it in my first book. I talk about it on these podcasts, but it was, wasn't two, it was three of my cousins. Mm. Okay. So my communication, my lack of communicating started because I was told to be quiet and I related that to sex and I related that to the silent treatment of I was told to be quiet I'm going to be quiet and now it started it went from telling me to be quiet while we molest you to it felt good not to say anything it, it now, literally felt good to not say anything because it kept you from engaging maybe or it just kept you from from bringing it, up those demons it kept me from engaging it allowed me to deflect okay but once or twice, she's going to start asking me questions. She's going to start giving herself the silent treatment. It's reverse psychology. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Although she may want wow. it. She may talk to somebody else, her mother, uncle, father. And if I found out, I would tell yeah. her, they can't tell you anything about me. See, this is why I don't talk because you talk too much and you tell everybody. Yeah. What tell you everybody want. everything. Yeah. You tell I'm everybody everything. Telling people everything. She wanted some answers of why does this guy talk? <laughs> All right, but none of my none of my girlfriends or my even my ex-wife or my kids, nobody knew I was molested. Nobody knew until I started talking about it in 2018. I couldn't talk about that stuff, but the silent treatment is a defense mechanism. It's mainly used to avoid questions. It's mainly used to avoid getting married. Let's talk about relationships. Leon, what are we going? Where are we going? What are we doing? I'll get mad, go drink something, smoke something, not weed, cigarettes or cigars, come back. And then knowing she still want to talk, I'm not going to talk. Let's go eat. Wow. Yeah. Right? You just keep, so in other words, keep moving it around so that okay. a conversation is like, oh, it will never happen, let alone it's the last thing you're going to engage in because it's creating, the conversation is going to create this stress that you're visualizing or you're literally feeling it. And you said that, well, it's kind of like when I was being molested, the only way for me to endure it, I got to remain silent. Not yeah. only during, during that stressful moment, but I need to wash it away and just not talk about it. But also when I didn't want to talk about it is because, and this is pretty cruel, but it's true. Pax, I didn't want to talk about it because I didn't want to tell her that, I didn't want to move forward with her. I didn't want to answer a question that she already knew the answer to because I was, I was acting that way anyway. <clears throat> so I didn't want to be honest about what she already knew. Yeah. So I was prolonged by the silent treatment, but also the silent treatment kept her in a relationship longer because I wasn't ready for her to go. Okay, so it was almost like a push-pull kind of a thing. It's kind of like a, a yin and a yang. I, I, I do it because I'm not going to give out information because I you're going to you're going to hear me tell you I really don't want you and right. at the same time at the same time I don't really want you to go anywhere yet because I need you to stick around right because it makes me feel comfortable I in other words I got a home I got a caregiver I got a home I got somebody I can can give a hard time to I can have sex with and blah 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 I get yeah. you and I get you pulling the more you push to get information out of me the further I moved away the more quiet I became the longer I stay, I remain quiet. The more you are we talk, are we talking about on a psychological, you chose to do that or is just, you just felt naturally just, I'm just going to be even more quiet or you were manipulatively thinking 
you seriously going to ask me about that again? Then I'm really not going to talk to you. Did you do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was, that was, and that felt good to me because now, wow. or a few times, I had to make it even more intense every single how do, time. How do you, wait, how do you make it? Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just going to ask because, okay, I didn't tell you this, Leon, but a lot of people who are beginning their journey of dealing with someone who's a narcissistic or traits or MPD, they they watch this channel. So if just for them, just kind of talk to them for a moment. Yeah. How could you make that more intense? You're already not talking. Well, <laughs> just say no, no, right. It gets the way I made it more intense is by extending the time limit. <laughs> okay, right. I got you. women like I, I got you. I see. Talk. If I didn't talk to her, she's gonna go find somebody to talk to. She's gonna get on the phone. Her girlfriend, her yeah. brother, but they're not gonna give her the answers that she wants. I have the answers that you want. I know what you want to do. I know you're concerned about this relationship. We've been engaged for four or five years. We're not getting married. We haven't gotten married. We haven't planned any marriages. We haven't done anything. I come to work. I'm tired. I mean, I come home. I'm tired. I eat. You cook. I watch the ESPN. I drink a beer. Go to bed. And the cycle continues. I can change it up if you stop pushing. I can change it up. I'll come home. I won't watch ESPN. I'll talk to you. Or I watch ESPN with you, or I drink a beer, or we go eat, and I'm happy now. I'm cheerful because you stop pushing, but I know you still want to know something, and I'm still uh, unresolved. Unresolved questions that that yeah, that oh, that she may have. Yeah, you're I'm, you're you're oh. controlling it and manipulating and pushing it off. Did it ever like hit a wall, and then that's when you went like, you know what, I'm out of here for a few days or for a weekend because this is your punishment because you keep trying to push. And so, as a cheater. Uh, for me to go cheat because she because she keeps pushing against the silent treatment yeah i had to make her think that she pushed me out the door so i'm out the door now whatever happens 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 you can you can imagine anything yeah i'm with somebody else you don't know that but had you stopped pushing me and badgering me i would have stayed home and been quiet instead i left mm -hmm. home and i wasn't quiet i was with somebody else which is horrible bad mm -hmm. My thing was I had to make her make her the blame. It's your fault that I left and was attracted to somebody else. It's your fault that I drank all night and flirted with women. It's your fault that I was in the behind a building kissing on a girl. You shouldn't have pushed me to that point. When it comes to the silent treatment and the way you speak about it on your page, what you talk about and the way you explain it, <clears throat> How do you think it helps others when they hear it? What you're talking about now in the in the way you you discuss the silent treatment because not everybody has firsthand experience of being the one giving the silent treatment. A lot of people, coaches, therapists, psychiatrists, whatever it may be, they talk about it on the receiving end. How can your perspective just to, just I'm just asking before we go to this next thing here. Mm -hmm. How can your perspective be be just as if not more enlightening? From your opinion, I'm just asking an opinion right now. What do you think? Well, you have to. So <clears throat> in the beginning, you need to pay attention to a lot of things. Okay. First of all, if a man likes to communicate, what does he talk about? Does he like to talk? Does he talk about solid things? Does he talk about important things? Does he talk about himself? Okay. Does he talk about our what we're going to do together? Does he tell you about his past, his parents, maybe his issues? <laughs> You can be talked to them in the beginning. A lot of times, for me, because I knew women like to talk, women like to listen, they like to hear things. They like men to listen and look into their eyes. That was me being manipulative. Mm -hmm. They don't like me because I, I listen to her. Some women have been, as children, been told to shut up and sit down and don't say nothing. Go sit in the corner mm -hmm. during the years. And as they get older, and they meet these guys that don't talk, and now they, they, they talk a lot because they want to get it out. They have a lot of information. Yeah. They like it. Hey, it makes them feel good. They want to know their partner. Mm -hmm. You know? So you have to understand in the beginning stages of dating, why is a man talking? What is he talking about? Is he talking about his status? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, about all of his awards, his titles? Mm -hmm. Or is mm -hmm. he engaging in good, healthy, fruitful conversation? And yep. In, yep. in that case, you'll have that later on. Some men don't talk until they're having sex. I was the opposite. Mm -hmm. I wasn't talking during sex. 
I was talking before that when I felt like it. But some men won't talk, but their extremely high energy level is when they get into the bed. And after that, they're not talking about anything else. They shut down. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's you, they'll talk when they're happy. They'll talk when they're, when they're, they're yep. being fed. Their voice yep. are being fed. When their addictions are being fed. They talk when their energy level is up, when you're doing what they want to do. Engaging yeah, that's them. right. That's absolutely correct. No, those are, those are actually some great tips. Is that going to be in your new book, man? <laughs> it, I know you talk about it already, but. Yeah, because I talk about, so remember, it's the seven loveless, loveless traits. No bad communication, no communication, a lack of communication. You know, also a key thing is physical touch. Communicating without having, without engaging in sex. Yeah. Hodges, holding hands, rubbing her shoulders or scalp. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Putting your leg across hers. Just being yep. that nonverbal, nonverbal communication is huge. Yeah. I didn't yeah. have, I was nonverbal in the bed only, but outside of that, women want to be intimate. Engaging yeah. with women in sex, it happens before the bedroom. It happens in the car, the kitchen, the bathroom, at the mall, whatever. You don't just get in the bedroom like, <laughs> you know. Women want, they want to prepare their mind and their body so they, they're mm -hmm. in before she gives you her body. Men, I'm like, oh, what's up? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, oh, bam, bam, I'm out. Hey, what's up? Football game on? All right, I'm holler, I'm, I holler at you. I'm going to my boy's house. Yeah. That wasn't that 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 the right things like that that nonverbal communication. Women love that. Women need that. Women appreciate that. I knew how to do those things as a child because I watched porn, but I only only used it to suck her in to get her to come close to me. And once I had mm. her, once I did everything to her, make her feel good, I conquered her, and then I became bored with her. When you when you look back at it, and we're even talking about it right now. Since you've been a relationship coach, has this been something you've been recognized, whether it be a client or whether just the people that write you and talk to you? Have you recognized that this pattern is also in others in their relationship, not just men, but also women, too? I'm just asking. That's why it's so easy for me to give people answers. I'm going to tell you some Pax. Yeah. The problems are the same. The problems that I hear now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've heard when I first joined the Navy in 1983, although I didn't know how to deal with them because I was young. The yeah. I heard in 83 are the same in 2021. The only thing that changes is rotates through are the people. The problems are still the same. If he's addicted to alcohol, if she's, if she's uh, dominant, if he's verbally abusive, uh, if he doesn't communicate, if she's just, uh, if, 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 her, if her love language is acts of service, if he doesn't know his love languages, I've dealt with and talked to people about all of those things. Why well. does he disappear? How come he don't talk to me? You know, how come he won't marry me? It's been four years. It's been nine years. He'll talk to other people. He won't talk to me. Only thing to change are the people. So if I, I've experienced all of these issues all my life, let's say since 1983, since I joined the Navy. The, the problem's the same. It shifts around to different people. Okay, so then I got to throw this to you, and then I got to read something to you on the screen. Some people are, are asking uh, you a question here. Um, then I got to ask you this. Seriously, dude. Then if the problem's the same and, and the people, the faces just change, then what does that make the solution then? Because the advice you're given is is very important. Mm -hmm. So, so the, then, go the, ahead. The, the solution, it it's always going to be the same, but there's degrees of it, right? Okay. I, mm -hmm. Solution could be, for this couple, the, the solution could be therapy. For the next couple, it could be therapy, right? Mm -hmm. But... What type of therapy, how long, and how are you receiving the therapy? Okay. okay. So everybody can go through therapy. When I went through marriage counseling, I failed because I walked out. I'm like, man, mm. fuck that. You know, it's how you receive it. it. Are you ready for therapy? A lot of men hear the word therapy and they freak out. I freaked out. Therapy, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But you ready. To, here's the thing. If you're ready, if you want to make your marriage better, if you want to make your relationship work, if you want to rekindle your love, Get therapy. Listen to somebody. You have to want to make it better and not be comfortable and complacent. They have to want to make it better and not be comfortable and complacent. Yeah. We get <laughs> because... I've, I've gotten complacent with every in, in every relationship I was ever in. And then what happens, the woman becomes vulnerable or the man becomes vulnerable because you know we we just basic now. We've been we were happy, we were loving each other in the beginning, we were attracted to each other. <laughs> 
it fits out. You know the mm -hmm. problem a lot of people we have? We don't talk about the components of a relationship, right? We don't. Okay. I learned that in therapy. It's about 10. Who's going to do the chores in the house? After three months, are we going to rotate the chores, right? If we have children, are you going to allow me to discipline your children? Am I going to allow you to discipline my children? Tell me about your father and your mother. <laughs> yep, yep. About your, all the components of a relationship, right? What's yeah. your What's your um, blood sugar level? Your cholesterol level? Yeah, yeah. I had yeah. 2013. My ex-girlfriend didn't know that my, my, my artery was 80% clogged. I didn't talk to her about my health issues. She didn't know. What if I was driving and I had a heart attack with her and her son in the car at 80 miles yeah. an hour? I had mm -hmm. a heart attack base where I was able to walk to the hospital while I was having it. I have a stent in my heart, my chest. Mm. My, okay? So do you know his, how many dental exams does he get? Bad teeth leads to heart issues. Mm -hmm. That's what leads to heart attacks. High blood sugar means you could go blind or lose a foot. Well, if you lose your right foot, we got a family of four. I can't drive. How's that's that? A, that's, a, that's, a, that's an issue. That's a problem. Okay. It's gonna, that's going to affect communication and the relationship. And, and, then it, and then it starts to affect the sex, and then it starts to affect the intimacy and the touching, and it falls apart. But if you talk about these things, you can manage them as you move forward. Another thing, nope, we always talk about get, okay, getting married, whatever. Let's write our marriage vows, right? The marriage vows come, you you talk to them and you announce them at the end, right? During the wedding, right? Mm -hmm. What I started thinking about and coming up with were relationship vows. It's the same thing, but you're doing them early and you continue to do relationship vows. The biggest thing for everybody is the end all, which is the marriage vows. But what about between here, when you meet a person and you get your marriage vows? You have to come up with these relationship vows. What are you going to do? What, what are your relationship vows? How many are there? 10, 15, 20? I don't know. But you can do them. You can write them. They're your vows. We can do them. Okay? And in three months, we want our credit score to be 680. What do we do to get there? Boom, 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 boom. All right? I want to lose 20 pounds. You want to lose 15 pounds. Boom, 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 boom. I want to be more loving to you. I want to be more caring. I want to be a better listener. I want to do the things. I don't like gardens. I can't stand gardens because I don't like caterpillars. But if my woman likes gardens, okay, babe, let's go look. Let's go build you a garden. In the yeah, you're gonna you're gonna have a garden if you love her. You're gonna have a garden. That's the way, that's the way that works, right? right. And, and but, I, but but that means that means then that what we're I'm gonna say, guys here, guys, we're not picking on you if you hear it, but oh well, if you think so. But you're saying even if you don't like it, we're talking to guys right now. You're gonna make that compromise, or at least find a way you know, you, it works for her, so you can keep you, her. You should you should do that you should do that for each other, right? You understand. For instance, if you you meet a woman and her dad was never around, you have to play mm. the daddy role sometimes. Yep, that 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 can happen. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know how to do that. I was like, sure, my mama wasn't around. Huh? I didn't get the daddy. <laughs> I, for some reason, I can imagine right now in this moment you doing that <laughs> back in the day. But you may have you may have to go in the protector role. You may have to uh, 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 mode, I should say. Yeah, a provider, uh, of course. Though you're going to do that anyhow. But maybe guidance. Maybe she needs just uh, guidance. Doesn't have to be. You got to tell her exactly. Okay, two plus two equals four in that situation. Honey, this is what you need to do. Don't. It may mean guidance. Just simply listening to her so she can have a sounding board so, and a thumbs up. So yeah. you know. But check this out, Pax. My mother. We lost our house when I was eleven. I, I, I was sent to move with another lady. Blah blah blah. Uh, my mother started getting high on crack in 1985. So I lost mm -hmm. my mother. She died in 2012 for crack. Due to, due mm -hmm. to crack. Do you know that throughout those years, I always fell in love with my girlfriend's mother? Not in a lustful way, but um, I wanted to... I understand. To admired. You're right. You admired her. But if, if my girlfriend wasn't like her mother, I had a problem with that. Really? So, wow. Yeah. Because she should be like her mother. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were gonna... Hey, wait a minute. She's pretty good. You should be like her. Oh, man, you must have gotten in trouble with that guy. You didn't think you didn't make that statement. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> that would have got you in. Well, you're already in trouble, but that would have got you in more trouble. Right. right. But the key thing here is <laughs> the others saw a different side of me. When we were away from ground, trip, blah, 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 blah. 
hey, hi, mom, how you doing? Oh, Leon's so sweet. And then it's, I wasn't. But well, I had respect for the mothers because I was missing my mother. It wasn't yeah, about, of course. I just wanted somebody to understand me and not, and not, and not judge me. But I forced my girlfriends to judge me. My ex-wife judged me based on how I was how I was carrying myself. Yeah. And then I go to their mom. Hey, Leah, hug, hug. What you want to eat? I got you. Blah blah blah. I wanted that for my girlfriend. I didn't get that treatment because they didn't okay. get that treatment from me. I gave it to the mother. I was gonna say I was gonna say you beat me to it. I was gonna like, but you were really nice to the mom, but you you mistreated her. Leah, uh, I got I, hey, I got to read something to you. Sure. Before she get that out of mouth, I'm already. <laughs> sure, I get this. Man, I'm sorry. That would have tripped me out. You go to sell your dog or something, you know. Yeah. Ask yeah, me. so I got, I got to read something to you, somebody asking. So here we go. What is, they want, this is for you, not for me. What is your opinion on someone who has had severe childhood trauma and has not turned out to uh, to have NPD? They and had severe childhood trauma. But they're not uh, showing narcissistic traits or the disorder, uh, and they're asking that, uh, at least in their mind, they're saying that that person, even though they had the trauma, they're an empath. I know so, we're using labels and terms here, but just your opinion. Those type of people wind up giving unconditionally, okay? Because of the childhood trauma, they were either abused, lost, left behind, sent to an orphanage, uh, given up for adoption. So those type of people will look for love and care in other people and pour into people. And they love people unconditionally because they didn't have it as a child. It was taken from them. Their parents moved. Their parents got murdered or whatever on drugs. So that person, mm -hmm. they're naturally a, a loving, caring, giving person. Mm -hmm. so probably didn't develop those MP, the MPD. They, they went to the opposite of being a loving, caring, acts of service type of person but those people will get used and abused by somebody that did have a dysfunctional childhood like me right. they're not going to show them the love they're not going to have acts of service they're not going to want to communicate they're not going to care about physical touch only in the bedroom right they're not mm -hmm. going to be they're not going to give them gifts so those people that are empaths they're very outgoing they're very giving they're very nurturing loving and caring and they provide a lot but they wind up being used you know, they wind up being abused, whether it's spiritually, financially, um, verbally. But those, I understand what that, that's a great question because they just went the opposite way. All right. Thank you, Anne, for that question. A lot of times, just based upon what you just said right now, it, it means that they're good people is what you're saying. Yeah. But, and correct me if I say this wrong, but so technically they're imbalanced. There, there is no balance. Uh, they're giving too much is what you're saying? Yeah. They're, they're, they need to regulate who they're giving it to and be more aware of who they're giving And it's to. hard for them, to, for them to do that because it's coming from a place of goodness. It's coming from their heart. And they're saying, well, how can I be too good? But some people just don't appreciate that. I was one of those people. I didn't yeah. appreciate a good woman, a, a healthy woman, a giving, a nurturing type of woman. Again, I was good. With, I was okay with being uncomfortable. Even now, before I got into a relationship, but women want to send me gifts because Leon had helped me out, blah, blah, blah. Uh, send you a, a pack of cocoa, whatever. I could, I still have a hard time accepting gifts, right? Mm -hmm. But the infants, though, they, they, they're, they're, they're like, they can't believe that people are not as receiving like, as they want to like, get. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not like them per se, or they're not also appreciative uh, of someone showing them kindness. They it's can like, be conf confused by that. Yeah, it's like this. I come from a severely broken home, damaged. I met a woman um, that had, her parents were still married for 45 years and they mm -hmm. character and integrity and nice and stuff. You meet a woman like that and I meet a woman like that and she's like, well, why are you like this? This is not how the world is supposed to be. But she had a different upbringing. Right? Yes, of course. Right. Right way. I was put on a different path so I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't want to sit down and have dinner with the family. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to talk to you. Yeah. You, know, you know, I, I eat. I eat and go. I talk and go if I talk at all. Ooh. And uh, matter of fact, you bother me. Don't stand in front of the TV. You know, I, it's kind of like I'll go in the garage just to get away from you. Yeah, and so yeah. I know that the, the family morals I didn't have. Yeah. 
okay? I didn't know how to sit down and say grace. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I go out to eat. Aliyah, we're going to say grace. I'm like, hold on. You know, so it's something, little things like that. <laughs> those big I got to work on. <laughs> well, you know what? First, first episode, first one we were talking, we were turning it into a barbershop, but that's officially a barbershop statement. We're going like, I did say grace. I'm saying I'm finishing up. Amen right now. <laughs> We're going amen. Up. <laughs> say, okay, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It can it can happen. Yeah. And another thing, Pax, that I missed when my father left, and, you know, we wanted to move back with my father. I didn't know anything about chivalry. Okay, we 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 gonna have to. That's a whole show right there. Go okay. ahead. No, go ahead. That's a good one. No, it's very good you're bringing that up. Everybody, take a listen. But go ahead. It's like I plan the weekend. I'm a great planner, by the way. I love planning a nice. <laughs> you're great. Well, you know, you're master master chief, so you know. Yeah, right, planning. So I would look for the best restaurants, massage parlors, whatever, uh, pedicure, net manicure, um, roller skating, feeding the dogs, whatever. Yeah. But. Get to the restaurant, and this happened to me about five years ago. I was dating, <laughs> and we parked. I have a feeling what you're going to say. We're going. <laughs> I get out the car. I jet across the street. I go in the restaurant. I'm like, oh, it's like Leon. I'm like, oh man. <laughs> I'm, you I'm out. You know, you I yep, you're gone. I didn't close the car door. I didn't open the restaurant door. I got my jacket on. Like, you don't went to the you don't you don't went to the bathroom and everything. You don't went to the restroom and you why are they not in here yet? Gone. And that was like the the the, the night started going down from there. I recovered, <laughs> but she was hot. I'm like, look, but yep. she bad. She called like you just left me in the car, didn't even open the door. You go like, girl, you better open that door. I'll meet you inside. <laughs> Come on. I did that a lot though. I did that a lot. I wasn't a door open. I was I didn't pull out oh, the man. Take a Badly on. Badly on. Bad, no chivalry, dude. That's bad. Bad. How did, dude? How did you keep a woman, man? I'm well, sorry. Well, what kind of? There were you must have had arguments after arguments before and on the way home. Yeah, but you know what though? Women smart enough to know they're like, well, yeah, you know, he 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 didn't do that, but he, you know, he set up nice. He, he he do this over here, yeah, yeah, yeah. You so you, you get you 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 had some amazing people cross your path. But I'm not done here. I'm going to throw some things out to you, but I got some more here. I got to read off of my, my, my brief notes. Boundaries and standards are important. People are saying setting boundaries is very important. Communication, everybody's agreeing with you on that. <laughs> agreeing with you on that. Somebody just posted chivalry, rest in peace, laugh out loud. <laughs> so, so that's pretty good. Who wrote that? Who wrote that? I, I am, uh, is this the Anderson? Uh, I am Val Anderson. Anyhow, go ahead. You're going to say something, but I got to, I got to get to some stuff here I want to get to before we've gone uh, 30, 39 minutes, but go ahead. You're going to say something real quick. Chivalry, the woman's on the inside, away from the water being splashed from the carriage yeah. down the street or the car being splashed, the water being splashed from the yeah. car. You know, walk over a puddle, you put your coat down, so she yeah. goes, Chivalry, women, well, the woman's on the inside. Yeah. Somebody... Yep. No, 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 that's absolutely correct. Uh, um, that was the... Uh... <laughs> That was my parents' big thing, man. My mother would always say, hey, you walking down the street with a woman, you put her on the inside. They can still do cat calls, but they just know that woman, be that woman belong to you. She's right. under, your yeah, under your care. Even if you, <laughs> you ain't married to her, she, right. they know, yeah. hey, that woman's with me. You got to come through me to get to her. And that's very important to do that. Okay, here we go. I'm going to throw something at you. Okay, there's a term that's often used nowadays, but I want your opinion and thoughts on it for the audience that's here. Mm -hmm. Gray rock. Yeah, the gray rock is the well, this is a silent like silent treatment, correct? Well, it, yeah, it, um, being being lifeless, lifeless, so that the the, the narc that, it doesn't have anything to feed off of. I want your thoughts on that. I, I so gray rock is a lot of women get put in that category with the guy that's in that category. They they are uh, become victims of that um, because he or she becomes comfortable and complacent. They get them and they stop doing what they did in the beginning to get them. So they don't maintain them. A lot of times I was that person because I didn't have longevity or staying power. Okay. I couldn't stick around. I didn't know anything new to do. I was very superficial and surface. If it was just sexual and entertainment, that's all I was about. It wasn't about communicating and growing together and having a future together, uh, getting mm -hmm. to more. No, it wasn't about that. Um, but Gray Rock is just, yeah, that that women become, men and women become comfortable with the person that they got, and they don't think they need to do anything else to make the relationship better 
or grow uh, with the person or continue to love them or love them deeper on a deeper level. You know, get to know their mind more, their body, their wants, their needs, their desires, you know, the idiosyncrasies in a relationship. What do they, um, you know, how do they kind of, you want children? Uh, what's the plan with the children that you do have? Do we have, are we going to have children? How many, how many children are we going to have? But sometimes people just get into a relationship, but they're not relating. Wow. That's pretty, dude, seriously, there's a t-shirt right there, man. Seriously, you better get a merch line going. Right. They're, they're in a relationship, but they ain't relating. And, and you know, by you saying that, you're really opening a lot of eyes. A lot of people are mentioning a number of things here while they're listening to you that's in harmony with what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to relationships, as a relationship coach, if people are not relating, then what are they doing then, Leon, oh, when they're together? Co oh, they're, they're roommates then. That's it. I live that life too. And then one, one is scared to move on. One is hurt because one has morals and one doesn't. The one that mm -hmm. doesn't is okay with being the, the gray rock syndrome, the silent syndrome. And then you, what you have there is called relationship mismatch. Mm. So then you can talk about, you can talk about the love languages, acts of service, receiving gifts, words of affirmation, physical touch, quality time. If you don't make yourself aware of those before you get started, you're going to have an imbalance, like you said earlier. Relationship's going to be off kilter, and you're going to have relationship mismatch. The worst, one of the worst things that women do nowadays is they're, a lot of them, their, their love language is acts of service. They're giving, 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 and they're yeah. being trained and de depleted because his love language, and I talk about this in my book, is acts of disservice. There's no reciprocity. Mm. And then he might be the type that likes to receive gifts. So she's acts of service. She's giving him gifts. He might be sexual, physical touch. He's getting everything, but she's not getting anything out of it. You can have sex with a woman and she may not even be happy or satisfied because mentally she's going into the bedroom to please him and not her, herself. Women yeah, engage yeah. the mind and body. Like I said, once it's in synchronized, they really value that lovemaking, right? You know, the yeah. touch everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. minutes but yeah when you if you don't know the love languages of the, the guy or girl or woman the man or woman that you're meeting or dating you're going to run into some serious serious issues and then later on you're like oh but oh what's your love language i, I don't know somebody asked me my love language years ago i wouldn't have known but right. i know the fighter acts of service is one i know that physical touch but had she asked me i'm like i don't know what the hell you're talking about no i don't care you know we go to the bedroom after that. We, we go to the movies, we go to the theater. I take you to plays. What? I go to work, you're here, we make dinner. We, we get along just fine. Yeah, but, technically, like but technically, but technically, we're essentially roommates. Or it was, it was, or as somebody put on here, they're agreeing with you. Hashtag relationship mismatch uh, is what they have on the screen here. Uh, when people, okay, here we go. Ready? Next one. No contact. Thoughts on no contact, that phrase, and from a, from, a, from a narcissistic standpoint, that term no contact. So you better, if you, if you, if we break up, right? <laughs> you making me laugh already. I was trying not to. You, why do I feel like I'm, I'm still like my father's still alive? Because it's like you said that like he would have said, if we break up, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what's about to happen. <laughs> okay, yeah. go ahead. If we you better not let me back in because yeah. I'm going to come back and it's going to, I'm going to mistreat you 10 times worse. If we break up and you make contact with me, mm -hmm. after I mistreated you already after I've ghosted you, you're easy now. I'm not going to have respect for you. I'm going to disrespect you because after all these things I've done, I've said, you know who I am, you know my pattern. And you call me back, and you want you want you want to get back with me, and you contacted me, then you may be just a glutton for abuse. Your sin is gluttony, so I'm going to give. You <laughs> oh, your sin is gluttony. If you're the if you're the victim, your sin is gluttony. If you take that narcissist back, mm -hmm. because they've made it quite clear you are trash to them. And if you bring me back, I'm, I'm talking as if I'm the narcissist. So if I'm the narcissist, 
and she takes me back, oh, my Lord, then you're just a punching bag. And you obviously know what I've just done to you many times over over the decades. And you're going to take me back? And they call then that, I'm going to do worse. Go ahead. I'm going to do worse. They call it trauma bonding for her. You know, they get addicted to the drama. They, they get addicted to me. Um, the, roller coaster, the roller coaster that you bring. Uh -huh. it's, like a, it's like the narcissistic playground, right? I put you on a, the sliding board. First of all, you're by yourself. You go up there and you slide down. And yeah, I meet right. Bottom and you're like, oh, thank you. And you go up again and you slide down. Next time I go up with you and I'm holding you and we slide down. So you feel a little protected. Yeah. Right in the playground is that uh, merry-go-round. I put you in spin, spin, spin. You're dizzy. You're all over the place. You don't know what's going on. I walk away. I'm over here flirting while you're going around and around and around. I come back and get you. I stop it. And you yeah. off balance and I hold you again. You feel secure. You trust me. Then we get on the um, seesaw, the teeter totter. You get me up. And you look at me while I'm up in the air holding on. You take care of me. All right, you let me down. Now it's my turn. I got you up in the air. And I shake the board. I got you scared. I'm making you trust in me. About the other ride, you trust me. You secure. And then I hop off and it comes down. Bam. Impending. Yeah. Doom. Away and leave you just like that. That's the emotional roller coaster. It's worse than that. Because I'm taking you all, over, all around the place on different rides. Where most are yeah. here. Everywhere. Yeah. All over the place. You know? But I do that to keep you off balance. I do so that. that when you, call me I'm back, sorry. when you call me back, I'm coming back as the same person, and I'm not going to get any better. You knew that I, you knew who I was when you were with me. You knew who I was when I left you. I didn't leave to make myself better. I don't need to go through therapy. I just left. But you called me back, so here I am. This is what I don't expect anything but what you got a year ago. I'm not going to change. And oh, by the way, I got a girl, too. Wow. And... You're going to take them on different rides that they haven't been on and, ish, and and then bring back the ones they have been on before and then leave them again. And if they call you again, you're going to take them on those rides. You're just going to keep going until they break. And then, right. But then what happens is the narcissist gets bored with that because it's not fun anymore. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. All right. With that, with that particular uh, victim or target, with that particular target, yeah. it's kind of like, you know what? okay this is getting boring to me yeah it's it's like there's nothing else to get out of you i don't get a rise i'm not excited about controlling you i'm not excited about dominating you yeah. I'm not, i don't get turned on by making you cry anymore so it's over right okay all right here we go when you hear the word recovery what do you think of when i when i hear the word word recovery i think of um a lack of pain, more remorse, understanding, growth and development, seeking new people, wanting to do better in life, um, accomplishment, healthier lifestyle, uh, a clear vision, for forgiveness, all of those things. Because my recovery has been a long time. Like I said, I, I knew about my narcissism since 1987. Didn't even know what it meant. I never told anybody, I never talked about it, but I carried that weight with me, Pax, for 30 years, 40 years, and it just wore me down. But I knew how strong I was. If I can deal with these things and still come out on top, although I did have a heart attack, okay? Although I yeah. do have yeah. medical issues, I have a stent, mm -hmm. I have PSC, MPD, all that stuff. Um, recovery, uh, learning how to love again, right? Uh, myself and others, having respect myself, loving and respecting others, others' time, uh, others' issues, understanding their background. Recovery is not just about me. It's about um, how to help other people recover. Okay. And so yeah. I never wanted to talk about narcissism. It scared the hell out of me. I told you I came home in March, mm -hmm. and I had that book, The Five Love, you know, five, uh -huh. Love, Love Language. And I had it for a year, and I just picked it up, and I started thinking about, what can I do the opposite? Boom. It came. And then I did that video in June and July that went viral. I, didn't, I never planned those things. Yeah. I didn't want to talk about it. And so I did the video. Pax, that video is creepy to me. I can't watch it. Wow. I, I can't. You, I, but you, but, but, my, but Leon, bro, you did it. You did it. And you, you still, it's still creepy to you. It's creepy because <laughs> when I see that guy on that video, <laughs> I think about what he did to other women. I think about 
how he destroyed his marriage. I think about how he affected his kids. I think about how he ne neglected his daughter. I think about how, how I hurt other people's, my age, aunts, sisters, mothers. And oh. I hear it, and I'm like, I have to relive it when I watch the video. So you watch, I, yeah. That it triggers other women. I don't do that on purpose. It triggers me. And when I watch my own, it, any video I write, any video I post about narcissism, I post it, and then I'm like, oh. I go in there and answer the questions. Thank you, I appreciate it. While, I, while I'm answering questions, I gotta hear my voice again. And it's like, I know I'm different because I'm like, how, who is this, you know, dude, you are. Yeah, right, who's that guy, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm like, but God put me on this journey. So I get, thoughts come to me through osmosis at nighttime and morning time when I'm running and I stop and I write my notes on my phone and I come home and expound on it later. I, I yeah. away. Yeah. So yeah, um, recovery. That's what I think about recovery. When, when it when it comes to now, I'm going to read this to you. Now, remember, everything is from your it's stuff you've already you've already uh, had and said and, and all that kind of stuff in your videos. Here we go. Clear your mind. Uh, no mental contact. Pay your failure jar. If you don't clear your mind, go ahead. Tell us what that means. That was a really cool video too, by the way. So, uh, but go I, ahead. Men and women that contact me have two jars. The ones that are trying to separate. I, first of all, Pax, I never tell anybody to leave the husband, wife, boyfriend, girl. I don't. I don't. Yeah, really I'm. Know. I'm like. I'm like that too. I know what you mean. Yeah. So, you have to see your growth and your development. If you calling him or her and they don't answer, if you're texting them and they don't answer, and you oh, you crying, you smoking and drinking because of that person, put a dollar or a penny in that jar. So you got to see your pain. You feeling it, but you got to wake up and see it on your nightstand or in the kitchen or in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. But when you don't contact that person and it's been 96 hours, it's been 104 hours, it's been five days, six days, pay yourself so you can see that growth and development. And then the more you pay into yourself, it gets bigger and bigger and that's lower, less and less, or you haven't put anything in a negative jar. That's your growth. I tell yeah. people, Put put a fifty dollar bill in there because it's like oh that's a little ooh that's a lot okay but it's a lot if you're not putting it in there in the other yeah. job if you're taking away from yourself so at the end of the the month if you're putting twenty dollars a day so let's, let's say ten day ten dollars a day you take that that money that you've been successful with and do something nice with it treat yourself to a pedicure yeah. that's a reminder that you know what now I'm growing away from this male or female that I was in love with, that I couldn't get over, that I was addicted to. And I'm going to the store because I saved $300 because they are out of my life. Yeah, good you know, point, good point. Little, the little things you do. I tell people to make it a penny or something, but if you make it more, the stakes are higher, you're more, you, you're more inclined to, to stick to hey, it. Hey, when, when you go spend that money, you're gonna, you're gonna really like that asset that you're gonna get, or when you look at your feet and your, your, your fingernails, you look in the mirror at your hair. When you get those compliments, when people see, oh, yeah, your hair looks nice. And you're going like, yeah, I got rid of that guy. Yeah. <laughs> you sit there and go like, my hair looks that way because I paid myself back instead of paying into that negative uh, right. mindset in that negative jar. Uh, I got to ask, I got to ask this. You, you highlighted a number of times that people should make it a point to be strong and positive uh, instead of letting themselves go. Instead of, well, as you put it, you said it in the last segment too, but in your videos, not taking a shower, not taking care of yourself, just letting yourself go for that person who deliberately was looking to be manipulative and, and dump you. Mm -hmm. You're talking about picking yourself up, you know, having some self awareness and pride to take care of yourself, being strong and positive. Why is it important for us, even if we don't feel like it or if a person doesn't feel like it, to pick themselves up? And be strong and positive. Because, so, it's a lot of parts of this, but I'll talk about one main thing. When you meet a person and they become, and they're a narcissist, right? They verbally abuse you. Let's say they physically abuse you. They cheat. They ghost you. They disappear. Silent treatment. All of that, right? 100% mm -hmm. of the time is because it was something that was done to them by somebody you don't even know. Okay, say for instance, I that's good. That's right? good. Okay, go ahead. Say for instance, I start mistreating my girlfriend. 
She has nothing to do with my genetics or DNA. But I'm the way that I am because of my cousins molesting me, right? My Got cousins it. the way that they are because somebody molested them. So that's called intergenerational transmission of family violence. I'm passing it down to my girlfriend. I'm not molesting her. I'm not physically abusing her, but I'm verbally abusing her, mentally abusing her because of something happened from my cousins 60 years ago that has nothing to do with my girlfriend. And it makes you verbally, mentally, and emotionally abuse her. Even though you physically not touching her, you still are passing passing on that's she never met those people that did that to you. That's my but point. she's meeting the results of what they did. That's my exactly. Intergenerational transmission of family violence. Passing it down and then I pass yeah. it. Down. She right. should not accept that or accept it. I should not do it to her, but yeah. because I am, she should not accept that the abuse from somebody that she never met or saw that's dead and gone. Yeah, well, yep, yeah, that could be. No, really, dead and gone. And now she's getting the results of what they did to her husband or, or whatever the case may be. This, yeah. ma this, this person she wants to now marry and wonder why he's acting funny and treating her and talking to her in a vulgar way or disrespecting her when they go into, they go places or with a family members. You're saying she should not accept it and or absorb it. And she should not marry me because once you marry me, it's going to get worse because now I'm sure. mad to me marry you and you know I didn't want to get married. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, no, you can't just drop that and then keep going. Wait, <laughs> you will, wait, she will marry that person, maybe even thinking she's going to fix him and make it better and it's just going to be okay and he's just having a bad day. He just needs a beer or he just needs me to give him a, a, a foot rub. In actuality, <laughs> The person, let's say she did, I'm doing that, and she marries me. I'm gonna, you're saying I would then get mad at her that she even had the nerve to marry me, as it were. She forced me, she kept talking about it. She had a she forced me. Oh, dude, that's good. I like that. I, I don't say men, I thought that way. Um, and I didn't get married. I got married before, I'm not talking about my ex wife, but no, no, I know what you mean. Now I'm pissed off because you wanted this marriage, I didn't want it. Well, now since we're married. This is who I'm going to be because I so know everybody, you don't want to so, be. So, so everybody needs to kind of take a take a hint that if they get married and as soon as the vows are done and said and that person you marry start treating you like garbage, they're probably no, I'm just kidding. I'm not saying that's going to happen all the time, but that it's kind of a clue that they're done with you. And then people stay like that for a long time and they're unhappy and they just coexist. And but the but the target or the the innocent party is looking at it going like what's wrong what's going on? they're trying to make some sense of it they can't especially if they came from an intact as it were mother and father situation that went to forty fifty years and they die together holding hands they're coming into this relationship thinking oh it's just going to be just like my parents and we're going to be fine and it seemed like it's going good we get married or and then all of a sudden this person flips but that's because they had morals and I didn't okay. She's they were more. They were morally fit and ready for to build something with somebody. They were ready to build. You no. weren't. You're saying you weren't in that position. You weren't ready to build. You're still doing whatever you were doing, and the last thing you're going to do is build with somebody. And, and I felt honored when my ex-wife, when we got married. I felt honored to know that somebody wanted to marry me yeah. because I knew that I wasn't marriage material. She knew. She thought I made her think that, but I was like, "Wow, she want to marry me." Had I said that out loud, she'd be like, well, what you mean? What's wrong? We probably wouldn't have gotten married. Then again, we would have because I would have lied. I would have lied to her. I was going to say, I don't think you would have probably told her the things that were technically emotional potholes and things that you were going to do later on or were doing well, that were going to create a problem. Let me drop another bomb on you. You, but you can't keep doing this, man. <laughs> I'm an old man. I'm older than you. You give me a heart attack. Go ahead. When I got in engaged and married when I'm when I told you my wife was pregnant and the lady that I slept with was pregnant and they were pregnant at the same time um I wasn't going to tell my wife that I had another baby Ooh. she found out where we were living and she sent a letter to my wife and my wife came to my job with the letter and the letter stated I have a baby with your husband. You need to let him see his daughter. I'll never forget that as for as long as I live. And I turned my wife's life upside down. She didn't deserve that. 
No. She didn't deserve. I didn't. I didn't deserve her. And so, yeah, I, I, I never would have never told her that I had a daughter. But the girl told my wife I had a baby, and I denied it. I didn't hadn't had a paternity test yet at the time. This was in 1996. Mm -hmm. Found out where we were living in Cleveland and mailed the letter to my wife's house, my her parents' house. So I'm at work, and my wife and her mother, and father read the letter. I had no idea. I had no clue. And so. I got a letter. I got summons to court. Went to the courthouse. I was still hurt, pissed off that she told my wife. She had every right to tell on me, but I wasn't thinking right at the time. I was halfway insane. Went to court, just like Mr. Walker. Do you want to uh, uh, establish paternity there? You want to get a test? I was like, I want a test. That ain't my daughter, and I'm looking at her. Daughter looked just like, looked just like me, and her mother mm -hmm. called me up the B I T C H word right there in court. You sorry, my, ah, the grandmother did that. And the judge was like, order the court. And I was in my military uniform. I was a piece of work, Pax. So we went in the back, got the swab. Six weeks later, I got the letter, you are the father. I knew I was the father. Started child support. But it was a big break for me because I would have never told my wife that I had another baby. Mm -hmm. I don't keep that secret. I have no idea. You know something? There's a show coming out. Maybe this one the next one called Skin Deep. My daughter and I went on there back in June, and I had to clean with everything. I told my daughter, I asked your mother to get an abortion. I told her everything. Okay. Pax, wow. I, was, I was in 1994 to 96 were the worst two years of my life to this day. And so we did the show in June. I had to come, and I'm a, when it comes out, they'll send me a link. I'll let you, I'll send it to you. But I had yes, to come to my daughter, and I was like, ah. So people, I'm going to tell you, men and women, something. If you do things, if you've done something a long time ago, you think it's not going to come out, it's going to come out. It's going to come back and get you. You got to face You got to face it. Whatever it is, face it. If it's a child, face it. If it's whatever, yep. you know, just be careful. Don't hurt people. But I did a lot of hurting, Pikes. But yeah. just, go, just go through it. Okay, mm -hmm. then I'm going to ask you this word then. And we're, we're gonna we're we're gonna wrap this up because just if, for those of you that are still here, uh, I want you to know um, Leon and I are gonna do some other things together uh, coming your way. Uh, we're gonna do a, a few more shows together, uh, in which all of you will be able to to speak with him and talk to him. Uh, thank you, everyone. That's uh, just so you know, Leon. Uh, everyone's uh, doing a group chat over here. Everybody's talking with one another. That normally happens with these shows uh, as we do them. I really appreciate everybody for being here for Leon. And my guest today, um, but I'm going to ask you this word, uh, and then I got a just a few statements I want to pass on to you uh, of appreciation. When you hear the word heal or healing, now we already just talked about the word recovery. Mm -hmm. Now, but when you hear the word heal or healing, what does it mean to you? Heal or healing means acceptance. It means maturity. It means thinking differently. It means helping others. It means um, better health. Um, seeking wisdom. It means never ending. Because I will always be healing. It means knowing where you come from and knowing where you want to go. It means, and I, this is the biggest thing, problem I had with my, my my perpetrators and even my mom, right? When I started going through therapy, she said, you got to forgive those people. Because, Pax, I was carrying a heavy burden, man. Yeah. Heavy. I was mad at my mother for 32 years till I finally went through therapy. And she told me how to process that. It's not your mother, it's a drug. Um... I was mad at my cousins, my babysitter, my uncle, all that. But it was affecting me. I had to let it go. I had to forgive them. Because something, somebody does something to them. My two female cousins, one died from alcohol, and the other one was murdered. My uncle was murdered, too. So I never got a chance. I didn't want to face them, but I, I had to forgive them. Mm -hmm. But healing, um, growing, making amends, being fair, honesty, all of those things. Healing to me is it's constant. It's every single day. Yeah. Not having anger issues. Don't suppress things. Talk. Let it out in the open. 
and find a, a solution. Yeah. When it comes to the, you said it at the, uh, at the beginning uh, of our first segment, and I, I want you to expound because what I have found so unique and special about you um, is that you have an amazing natural ability to expound on things, to take them beyond face value to the point that you literally uh, are like, I know you, you're master, master chief, master chief mm -hmm. uh, but, but I, you are an emotional master chef because you can expound on something and cut it up the right amount of slices so that people can digest it and they can utilize the information. You when know, you do your videos and when you talk, mm -hmm. come on, man, I'll give you a compliment. You can't cut me off. So what I was going to say is, <laughs> just messing with you. Hey, be, hey, respect the elders, man. Don't cut me off. So I, just, I was going to say, so I'm just messing with you. So hey, this is barbershop time. Sit there, young man. Let me just get finished. All right? All right? You know how it is. So um, you have an ability to take information. You've just been doing it one right after another since I've been mentioning them to you. And you don't just give a cookie cutter answer. You give people perspective based upon how it has hit you. You have literally had uh, over two hours of taking everybody into a barbershop. You know, Pat, you know, I, go ahead, go ahead. You're going to say, my man. Thank you. Um, and that's why I always say, man, God put me on this journey. You know, I have, some women have said some, and guys said some, some um, kind of mean things over the past few months. It hasn't been a lot though. I just mm -hmm. respectfully responded and block them. I'm not going to deal with yeah. that. But yeah. um, I don't have to think about things when you when you tell me because I already have not only the answer but the experience. And like I yeah. told you before, yeah. the only things are the people. Yeah. I've dealt with all of this stuff. Um, but God is the reason why I'm here. Mm -hmm. Why I talk, the reason why I'm able to answer these questions, I don't have to stammer, look around, and like, oh, oh, oh. no, <laughs> you know, right? I don't. What am I? What am I going to say next? It doesn't. That's not the look on your face. Nope, it's, it doesn't bother me at all. I, in fact, I embrace it um, because, like I tell people, these videos help me out. Talking to you yeah. and people coming in, it's still my therapy because uh, it's not even about my reputation, but it's about. Um, my journey and my goal to keep people alive because there was times where I didn't think I had any, anybody in my corner to keep me alive. I didn't think I had anybody there. It was just easy to think about suicide. And I had to think about the people that love me, the people that I love, the mm -hmm. people that look up to me, the people that want to hear my voice and ask yeah. a question for me to answer. So, yeah. But thank you for that. I appreciate that. You have, a, you have, a, you have everyone's attention that's been here. And everyone's been encouraging each other. Uh, someone says here, forgive yourself. Yeah. Uh, is, is, is so important, is what they're saying. That's a scan. Uh, I look like this says scan in 666. Very, um, very important uh, is what they're highlighting. It says, uh, someone put in here, I'm not with a narc no, no longer. Uh, I'm addicted on how they think. This is my healing process, so I don't fit, fall for another. Yeah. I would also like to help others uh, on my stories to help others. That's from Jax75. She wrote that. When it comes to people that you have met, many of them trying to process and figure out how this person or that person works. Or is it more important to figure out how somebody ticks? Or is it more important to figure out how we tick? Which one do you think comes first? It's more important if you real and you're a servant person, it's more important to figure out how they tick. If you're very authentic and serving, you already know who you are. You want to make yeah. them, you want to bring them in your life, in your world, and you want to get your life course in sync with them. So I should be serving her and she should be serving me. You know, we mesh, interchange ideas, exchange ideas, but it's, I should be more concerned or worried or um, into what makes her move, what makes her yeah. happy, what keeps her happy, what, mm -hmm. what possibly bring her down, how mm -hmm. do I yep. when she's having a bad day, when she's just feeling kind of melancholy and she's not unhappy and she don't know why, what do I need to do when she's 
on her cycle or if she's yep. going to menopause and she's she wants some chocolate or she's hot how do i get her back to normal for that that day you know whatever but it's more important to me because to to know the people that i'm going to be around and be with because as a servant leader in a relationship i'm a servant leader she's a servant leader right i have to be approachable i have to be open i need to know you know how i can keep her happy and she should do the same thing for me it shouldn't be one mm -hmm. no it shouldn't be selfish you know you yeah. have to you know your partner period Te teamwork so, all, teamwork all the way right yeah i already know me i need to let her know yeah. me she, I, she needs to know i need to know her so it's I think it's more important to know what makes her tick, you know, go up and down yeah. and happy, sad. So I can yeah. manage, you know, our own emotions and, you know, she can manage mine. She can help me out. I need some feedback. I need to know why I'm feeling this way. And she needs the same thing. Right. Being a good listener, you mentioned that in the first segment, You, I think you touched on it again here as well. Um, but uh, being a good listener is important in a relationship from as the relationship coach. Uh, highlight to everybody before we have to go mm -hmm. being a good listener in other words slash communication mm -hmm. being a good listener means what from your perspective being as a, a man as a man or just in a relationship you go either way you want to go with it um and let's go with a relationship being a good listener means that you plan to understand that person you plan to grow with that person. You plan to take them serious. You plan to take on board wants, needs, desires, missing out on um, how they've been mistreated in the past, and you want to help them move forward to keep them from going to a dark path. Down mm -hmm. a dark. Listening means you want to know what they don't like. <laughs> yeah. Right? So that you don't be repeating those things, and, you know, and causing arguments. Well, I told you I didn't like that a month ago. I don't remember that. That's the worst thing. Women can't stand when a man forgets. Them. <laughs> preach, no preach, man. Go. You know, and, and, I, you, and you know, in most of the time, uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it over here on this side. Most of the time, a guy do that is because he just don't care is why he forget. But because because come on now, we be remembering statistics from from a game from like five years ago. Right. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So I, I'm always intrigued. My son tried that one time. And he's like, nah, he was telling the sisters that. And I looked at him. I said, boy, you just a liar. You lying. You a liar right now. Because I because men remember stuff when they want to remember it. Selective yeah. hearing. You select, yeah, selective hearing and memory. Go ahead. You were saying being a good listener. Listening shows. And then when you listen and then you respond and you give her good advice based on what she said and it, it makes sense. You know, it's it's you have that connection that builds chemistry, and you learn about compatible. You learn about it builds chemistry. And you learn about compatibility. A lot of people don't listen. A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't want to even talk. Don't want to respond. They're only interested in one thing: looking at you and getting you in the bedroom. But communication is key, a key component in a relationship. Communication goes two ways. It's the difference between communicating and taking turns talking. Big difference. Yeah, that's Number a very good point. That's a very good point. One wait, 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 before we go, no, just for, for the young people that watch the show or anybody else, why is that, why is that a, a difference between taking turns and literally being a good listener and communicating? Well, when you, when you, when you're a good listener, you communicate, you learn, you grow, you yep. have, you have a, a vision. You can develop a blueprint for the relationship. Yep. Turns talking is, trying to one up to that person you're not there's no listening when you're taking turns you're just trying to get it out and sometimes that's a narcissistic way of being vindictive and hurting somebody just to say something just to you know well you said it well i did it you know going back and forth but listening communicating um <clears throat> there's more than one way to communicate just by talking physical <clears throat> touching eye contact listening being aware being open Sitting down. Sometimes you just need to sit down and shut the hell up and let somebody talk. Amen. Okay. Amen to that. Oh, seriously. Amen to that. And a lot of times guys can find themselves in a situation that they're so accustomed to being quiet 
and just agreeing that they never say what they really need to say. So they need to not just be, uh, as I have a good friend often say, don't just be a consumer, but be a contributor as well. Uh, yeah. Because a woman wants a contributor, you know, uh, so make sure that, that we're doing that too. How, okay, I keep saying we're going to end it. Everybody's going crazy over here. And you're getting amens on the screen. Everybody's, listen, man, you didn't came here and rocked it this Friday. Uh, but I got to ask you this now. It popped into my head. Oh, my goodness. Questions just popped up on the screen, too. Okay, so I'm going to ask you this. I need you to tell everybody what they need to do so that they don't step in it. And if they left it, they don't step back in it in dealing with somebody who's self-absorbed, haughty, we call them narcissistic or clinically it may be the case, or toxic. Mm -hmm. How does somebody not step in it? Just as brief as you can. Uh, we've got an hour and, and 17 minutes, and I know at some point you need to have a night out there where you are. You're a couple hours ahead of me. But how can they not step in it and avoid getting in a relationship that's bad for them? And if they left it, what's words of advice for them not to go back? So words of advice to not to go back is because you're going back to old things, old days, old times, old wounds. There's like nothing. Left it for a reason, and remember why you left it. People don't date. We we date. We go to the movies, get popcorn, we get hot dogs, we laugh and joke, we drive the car, whatever. But you have to ask. Don't be afraid to ask hard questions. Don't be afraid to ask about or look for red flags. But don't be be fair and look for white flags too, because some people people overcome things. They get through stuff. They you know. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking to a friend the other day. She said, I was told you never asked about a man's past. You never asked about his past. You should ask about my past. You know? <laughs> yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt, you know? Because there's a reason why I'm single. Not anymore, but there's a reason why uh, I got divorced. You know, mm -hmm. yep. why my, one of my kids don't talk to me. Whatever. There's a mm -hmm. reason why, you know, um, my dad died in 1999. Why did he die? Oh, he's alcoholic. Oh, Leon, do you drink? I used to drink a lot. Yeah. Yeah. There's a why my mother was addicted to crack. Why? Well, my mother had an addictive personality. Leon, do you have an addictive personality? I used to have, I still have one, but I'm not addicted to porn anymore. Now I'm addicted to being a, a good boyfriend, a good godfather, right? Yeah. I'm addicted yeah. to taking care of my dog. I'm addicted to being a great leader in the community. So <clears throat> you have to ask about the past. You have to. Don't just date and then don't do it. Um, attraction shock. Be, you know, don't be all shopping or attracted to just the exterior of a person. Some of the most yeah. beautiful people are ha have it inside here and have great personalities. Look up, look for people's personality. Look for their, their drive and their ambition. What are their goals? You know, what are they trying to do in life? And, and then look at how they're living. If you go and move, go in their house and they're a hoarder and dirt and the house is stinky and dirty and you decide to settle with that person. You know, hopefully this is still going here. You guys can all hear me. Uh, mm -hmm. Leon, uh, I'm going to get you back. Do you hear me back yet, Leon? Hold on a second. You got me back, getting back here. All right. We back together here? Are we back? Yeah. Okay, ask, so. You know, people don't ask the questions. and they, You know, you, you look at how people are living. You know, what, you know, if they keep their car clean, stuff like that. You know, keep the house clean. The tub is washed out. The toilet is clean. You know, the house don't stink. You have to look at those things. And I mean, I, that's not just, that doesn't just totally tell you who the person is, but it's it good. does a lot of it. It will tell a lot pretty much. Right. Cause their, their exterior really shows a lot of who they are on the inside. Yeah. Uh, you know, if they're, they're living a lifestyle, which means they don't, they don't care to take care of themselves and other things. They're going to do the same. I, okay. I better not make everybody feel hurt when I tell you to co to participate and then don't call on you. So hold on one second. I got to do this. You got one question here in front of me. That, and let me pull it up. Can you see Can you see that there? Oh, shucks. Why do, why, oh, here, hold on. I didn't put it there. Now I can't see all of it. Uh, why do narcs tell my kids I'm always trying to be the man and downplay? Can you see the rest of it? 
Yeah. Um, they do that because they know that they cannot be the man that she requires him to be. And yeah. when you turn your kids against another person, that makes them feel good. It makes them feel right. And it makes the, the person that you're trying to look bad, look bad, even with the kids. So narcissistic people, grandiose type of thing, pat me on my back, award me, hug me, pay attention. Wow. She's bad. She's no good. It's just, it's just a, it's a ploy to turn people against the person that's actually doing the right thing. So, okay. So let's say somebody's in that position. Should they stump their feet, bang on the gong, and say, hey, let me tell you who I really am? What would be the course of action that they need to take? Is it about defending themselves or letting time go by? No, you have and to. And being stoic. You being stoic. And you know, you have to defend yourself because the narc is going to keep going. If you shut up and stay and sit there and with a, being stoic, they win. And they'll continue to win. And now you look bad and you make it seem like what they're saying or doing is the right way. And what they're saying is true, which is not. You have to speak up. You have to protect yourself because your kids could be possibly being taken down a deep, dark path and to wind up going against you for a long time. You get a few, we get a few years with our kids to, to develop their minds and their mindset. And if you wait too late and you don't go back and, and fix it, they'll always feel that same way about you. When they were 10 years old, they're 20 years old now, my son's mm -hmm. doing it to me now. He feels a certain way about me, something that he said I did 10 years ago, which I didn't. But you have to you have to stamp that out right now, fix it, and stand up for yourself because the narcissist is going to keep making you look bad because they want that feel good. Look at me. I'm the best parent. I'm the better parent. I'm better than yeah. mom type of thing. And then you look at it from a financial standpoint, would the kid decide to move with you and you don't have to pay child support and they have to pay you child support because now you got custody of the kids. Now the kids yeah. saying, mommy, is this, mommy's that. Is it a financial gain for you? It could be. Be Being in the position that you are right now in life, and when I say a position, the position is you're, you're happy now comparison to before. Ooh. That's, the posi that's the position I'm talking about. Yeah. So when, So you're happy now. But before you weren't. But what is your focus? It's not on before, is it? It's on right now. Yeah, it's on right now. The, the focus, I mean, on before, I, I laugh at how I was, Pax. And I'm very familiar with my past. There's no way I'm going back to that. It almost killed me. I was getting sicker by the day. Um, but where I am right now is about one to get to be 120 years old, happy, having fun, laughing. <laughs> You know, finally being in a relationship, finally knowing what it's like to get married one day and have a wife and enjoy and not be selfish. I had some selfish ways, man. I didn't even realize it. It was like grandiose, all about me. And like, I want this. I need this. And I didn't realize it, but I want to share myself with, with one woman. I'm doing that. You know, I want to be, you know, happy and go lucky and no issues, no problems. We're going to have issues, but we're going to work through that where it takes a minute. Talk about it. 30 seconds. Oh, it was, and you're done. Yeah, yeah. and you're done. It, it it's not going weeks, it's not going for hours and weeks and months, and it's the same old. Would you say problem? As you said in the first segment, and everybody got the same old problem, all because of communication. Just say, you know what? It, it's it's two people building something, so let's talk about it. But that can't always happen when you have somebody that doesn't want to talk about it, right? If they're gonna go ghost or they're gonna do silent treatment or any of the above you have to recognize you're dealing with somebody that does not want to build with you. They if don't they have... don't want to be in the same construction company or they got their construction company, you have yours and you're trying to build a happy life together. They may be in the demolition field and you're in the construction field and all they want to do is tear up whatever you build. That's going to be a problem. Would you say a mismatch relationship mismatch? There you go. I told you, man, you need a shirt, man. I need a whole line of shirts. I'll put that sucker on and wear a show with it. Hey, send me one. I'll put that on hashtag relationship. Somebody already put it on there earlier. All I'm right, man. We, I'm we did. The first two books that I'll, I'm going to see you copy of those. And then this next book will be out in December. I'll let you, you get it. Definitely. Okay. I'm looking forward to the show. What would you call it? Skin Deep? What would you say? What was the name? Yeah, look up. It, it, he'll let me know when it comes out. It's called Skin Deep or The And. T-H-E-A-N-D. But you can find it on Skin Deep. It's deep because they put two people in front of each other 
There's nothing in front of you but a table and you ask each other cards. And my daughter said, why weren't you there for me? I was like, <gasps> uh, Dude, I got I to gotta watch that. But as a dad with two daughters, <laughs> and I had to go get custody of my own, I'm just telling you. The table's about this big, and you get 10 cards, she get 10 cards. And these big bright lights are right here. So I'll let you know when it when it when it airs. It's gonna be it's called Skin Deep or the the end. Skin Deep either one. You can find it. But you, you know you you look you look okay, man. It don't look like nobody hurt you. It don't look like nobody took a <laughs> oh, a champagne bottle upside your head. <laughs> you look like you're... All right, thank you, my friend. Thank you so much for this. Everybody, thank everyone for being here again. Everybody's in love with you, my friend, and and and, and got a chance to learn from you. So much happening. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, and everybody, thank you for the chat. But uh, people are on the floor laughing. They're talking about their they enjoy they enjoyed this with you. So thank you, my friend. Take care, everybody. Like, comment, share, follow Leon uh, on his page, and er everywhere else you can Google him. And so many hearts are going across the screen. Everybody's saying that they're telling you right now. She she's a friend. Eight oh eight says wonderful. Uh, I am Val Anderson says thank you, Leon. Uh, One Karma three says, nice chatting with uh, all of you. Everybody's been talking with one another. Uh, thank you, my friend, for opening up the eyes of our groups uh, here today. Take care. Have a good weekend. Stay safe. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye.